infraconscious perception is the result of those deep elements in the mind projecting their imagery and we become identified with them. People who become very identified with the sensations related to sexuality need to continue increasing the intensity of the sensations that they seek. Because we all know when you take a sensation, it's satisfying for a moment and then it passes away and we're no longer satisfied and we want more. This is the nature of desire. And the more we feed that, the more we seek that sensation, the more dissatisfied we become. So we have to get more sensation and increase the intensity more and more and more each time. Little by little, step by step, we have to go deeper and deeper, further and further, extending and exploring more intense sensation, more dangerous. This is how people are led from simple sexuality into the extremes of sexual abuse into masochism and sadism, into homosexuality, into brutality. It's because of identification with sensation and a lack of understanding of what the consciousness is. The result of that is the expansion of infraconscious traps in the mind. And those images project themselves more and more and the consciousness of that person becomes trapped more and more in those levels of the mind. And what happens when someone who's building a very strong infraconscious level is that they become a demon, inevitably. They're strengthening their own infraconsciousness, and that infraconsciousness becomes very aware and awake and active. And that's a tragedy. Now, the subconsciousness is that which is below our conscious awareness. Sub means below. Subconscious perception is closely related to the personality. It's related to the inheritance that we've got in our karma. This is what we call genotype, related to our genes. Our genes, which we inherit from our parents, is really the encoding of our own karma in matter. And that inheritance is both physical and psychological. We also have our phenotype, which is related to education. And this is all of those elements in our mind which we have learned as we've grown. So related to genotype with the personality and the consciousness, we have our race, our culture, our situation with our family, our blood, our sex, our skin color, where we were born, what kind of family we have. With phenotype, we have the education we received, the examples we observed, the things we were taught. All of these things produce formations in the mind, ideas, concepts, ways of behaving, ways of perceiving. Third, we have paratype, which is related to circumstances. And this can include the kind of circumstances we're surrounded by as we grow. Living in an area that's poor or an area that's rich. Having friends that are mean or friends that are lustful. A child goes to the movies and watches TV and he is shown images of detectives and thieves. And he grows up filling his mind with formations related to crime. And he's shown on television how to commit crimes. 
what the thieves do, how clever they are, how smart they are, how attractive they are. And all of those elements are producing formations in the mind of the child so that when he becomes an adult, he knows very well how to commit crimes and get away with it. In the same way, the child learns how to fornicate, how to behave in a selfish manner, in a proud manner. These all remain within the subconsciousness of the child. And so later, as he faces life and faces many situations, those subconscious elements, without his conscious awareness, stimulate him to act. Those examples exist in his own mind and are there pushing for a particular kind of behavior. Our own parents teach us and pass on to us all of their own negative values in the same way. Our friends, our schoolmates, our co-workers. In any situation where we are not consciously attentive to the perceptions that we are receiving, we are forming more subconscious elements in our own mind. And those elements push us to act in accordance with their creation. So nowadays, we're watching television, and it's very popular to watch TV and see these comedies, which are all based on cruelty. Our modern humor is based on violence, on making other people suffer humiliating others, criticizing others, making them feel bad, being sarcastic, being cruel. And as we watch those television shows and watch those movies, we're producing more formations in our own mind which stimulate us to imitate. And therefore, later, with our friends and family and loved ones, we act in the same way and we don't even see it. Likewise, we read books and magazines and see movies and television shows which demonstrate to us all the supposed pleasures of animal sexuality, adultery, fornication, orgies, homosexuality, lesbianism, drug use, smoking, drinking, all forms of crime, thievery, robbery, lying, And we take all of that information, becomes mental formations, which then prompt us to imitate and act in the same way. And so long as we don't activate the consciousness and consciously question the impulses that arise inside of us, we will act that way. And we will remain unaware of it. What's necessary is for the Gnostic student to begin to examine all the impulses that arise within us. And at the same time, to receive all incoming phenomena with directed attention, to remain conscious, to observe actively our internal states and our external events. And by that observation, we can transform the impressions of life and cease creating false formations in the mind. When we learn how to self-observe, we're learning how to be aware of the observed phenomena and the one who observes it. This is called a division of attention. When we self-remember, we are aware that we are doing this. We're in our bodies, aware of being in the body and using the body, aware of sensation, aware of consciousness, perception. To be in self-remembering and in self-observation, 
is 100% active. It is not at all mechanical. And it is not at all passive. It is an active form of perception. We may know, for example, that we're in a room, sitting on a chair, and listening. But that's passive. To actively listen, to really pay attention to what is being heard, and at the same time to be aware of all of the reactions that are being stimulated from moment to moment, requires great activity of the consciousness. For that to happen, the personality has to be passive. Our own mental formations have to recede, to become passive. Directed attention is the key. Consciously placing our attention from moment to moment is the key. When that consciously directed attention becomes continuous from moment to moment, not just during the day, but even when the physical body